In this video tutorial, we're going to be discussing water turbines, which are used to convert the kinetic energy of water into mechanical or electrical power. Now, there's two different types of water turbine. We have reaction turbines and we have impulse turbines. So in this video, we're going to be discussing some of the differences between the two, and then we're going to carry out some sample calculations for the subsea turbine pictured in the top left hand corner. So in the top right hand corner, we have the equation that can be used to calculate the power output of this subsea turbine. And this is actually the same formula that's used when we calculate the power output of a wind turbine. So this formula applies to any fluid, whether it be water or whether it be air. Now, most of these terms are relatively self-explanatory. We have the power in watts, we have the density of the fluid, and we have the velocity of the fluid. We have an additional two terms there. One of those is what's known as the swept area. So if we can imagine looking at our turbine from the front, like so, in the direction of the fluid, then what we would see is the blades of our turbine. Now the swept area is the area of the circle on which those blades are subscribed. We can see from our diagram that we know the total diameter of that circle, therefore we can calculate the area of that circle. The remaining term then is our coefficient of power. And our coefficient of power tells us how much of the kinetic energy that's contained within the fluid is actually going to get converted to electrical power. If that value of Cp was a half, then half of the kinetic energy in the fluid would be converted to electrical power. But this coefficient of power is limited by something called Bet's law. And the theory behind Bet's law is if we have fluid flowing towards the turbine, there's a limit on how much kinetic energy can be removed. The reason for that is if all of the kinetic energy was removed, then the fluid behind the turbine would have to be stationary. Now if the fluid behind the turbine was stationary, then that would cause a blockage and prevent the fluid from flowing past the blades. Now Betts law states that the maximum kinetic energy that can be removed from the fluid is 59.3%, or expressed as a decimal, 0.593. Now if that's the case, the value of Cp, the coefficient of power, can never exceed 59.3% or 0.593. So in actual fact, we tend to see relatively low values for this coefficient of power. In addition to Bet's limit of 59.3%, we also need to take into consideration the efficiency of the machine. So how efficiently does it convert fluid power to mechanical power? and how efficiently does it convert mechanical power to electrical power. So in the example here, we're going to have a coefficient of power of 0.42. We have various other data in the bottom left hand corner. We have the density of the fluid or the water as 1020 kilograms per meter cubed. We have a diameter of the rotor equal to 8.5 meters and we have a velocity of the fluid equal to 3.5 meters per second. So really all we're going to be doing here is plugging in our values. The power output equals the coefficient of power, 0.42, times a half, the density, 1020, the swept area, well area is pi r squared, we have a diameter of 8.5, which corresponds to a radius of 4.25 meters. We're already in SI units there. So we have pi times 4.25 squared times our velocity cubed. Now when we run that through the calculator, we get a power output for this subsea turbine equal to 521,136 watts, or expressed in megawatts, 
that's 0 0.521 megawatts. So another interesting thing we can do here is take the rated power of a turbine and determine what fluid velocity is necessary in order to achieve rated power. So let's say for example, our subsea turbine here has a rated power of one megawatt. So this time we know the power and we're going to try and find the velocity. So if we take our original formula, we had P equals CP a half rho AV cubed. We can rearrange that to get V cubed on its own. And V cubed is just going to be the power divided by all of the other terms there. So divided by CP a half rho A. But it isn't actually V cubed that we're trying to find, it's V. So what we would need to do is take the cube root of each side. So the cube root of the right hand side would appear like so. And cube rooting the left hand side, we would lose the cube here. Note that it's the cube root of everything within that fraction. Next we can plug in some values. So the velocity that corresponds with our power of one megawatt would be the cube root of one megawatt. Well, one megawatt is one times 10 to the six watts divided by our coefficient of power, which will remain unchanged, times a half, times the density, times the swept area, which we said was pi times 4.25 squared. Now when we run all of that through the calculator, we get a velocity equal to 4.35 meters per second. Now this gives us an interesting point for comparison because we said when the fluid velocity was 3.5 meters per second, we got a power output of half a megawatt roughly. But a relatively small increase in the fluid velocity up to 4.35 meters per second now gives us a power output of one megawatt or one times 10 to the six watts. What this demonstrates is that relatively small increases in velocity can lead to relatively high increases in power output. And this is exactly the same thing that we see with wind turbines. In the next video, we're going to see how reaction turbines can be used within process plant in order to produce electrical power output from the energy contained within the working fluid.